big matches and, you know, happy endings and angles to set up future events and superstars and pomp and circumstance the whole nine yards. I think this WrestleMania, night two, might have been the greatest night of WrestleMania there's ever been. Brian, Brian and Vinny, along with Grady and Craig and sometimes other people. Wrestling. You know, this show opened up with Triple H coming out and talking about how it's a new era. They're really pushing this renaissance thing. Rhea is the hottest woman they have in the entire company. I mean, she's a star at the level of the big men stars. There's no reason to beat her right now. Many years ago, there was a masked independent wrestler called El Generico. His gimmick was that he had the best match in every show. Mm -hmm. Yep. And he retired. And he passed that gimmick on to Sami Zayn. And the gimmick still lives. This ruled! From the bell ringing to end Sami and Gunther, to the bell ringing to start the main event was 40 minutes. I was reminded of the famous Tracy Smothers quote. We're going to start off slow and then taper off from there. Was it too long by a half hour? Yes. Okay. <laughs> oh, is that all? I thought the thing was a spectacle. I was not bored at any point. I did want them to uh, get to the point. Up. Yeah. I've seen plenty of matches worse than this. I have too. They, they just stretched it. The, the, the hell last out. 13, 15 minutes was very good. Yeah. It just took forever to get there. My main man, Eddie, who did a uh, whale scout auction and he won. He chose. Night two of WrestleMania to co-host his show. He took his phone and sent out a tweet, bored at work, LOL, while beating Seth's ass. That is amazing. A king, this Drew McIntyre is. Oh, he is. He's the greatest. He's phenomenal. He's so happy after four years, he finally got his win, and he starts mocking CM Punk. Punk takes off this big metal arm brace, and he starts beating the shit out of Drew with this brace, and suddenly they hit Damian Priest's music. He pins Drew McIntyre, and he wins the title. This fucking place went ape shit. Somehow, bisexual Undertaker was... Yes, I did cast that. One. I saw that, and I thought, well, that would certainly be news. Oh, they're talking about Damian Priest. Yes. Gotcha. Okay, that makes more sense. Yeah, you know, I tweeted, uh, I don't want to ever hear Bubba talk about bias again. And it was like a total joke. And man, these fuckers on Twitter, they're like, well, what about that picture of you and Dave in the AW? One man will leave his champion. The other would go home to his wife, Brandy. Yes. So, spoiler, everyone. Does Rowan get Brandy now? Because that is a fine <laughs> consolation prize. No, stop. From the moment she came out to the end of her show, she was absolutely determined to remind y'all who the hell she is. Remember that Rock Hulk Hogan match? I think Dave gave that match a star and a half. People have been bitching about this for 22 years now. That's going to be your argument. That that match should have been like four stars because, you know, the crowd was going nuts and the heat and, and just felt legendary. Cody and Roman Reigns was a five-star match. I mean, for what it was, it was perfect. Cody's entrance was actually Triple H's entrance from 10 years ago. The mask. How symbolic. about that? I hadn't thought of that. Outruns John Cena when The Rock's music hits. This final boss who does nothing but fucking swear, and he's like, God damn motherfucker, what's this fucking mother? And he's just like the whole way down, and they're trying to bleep everything. Then the shield music hits. Yes. And I thought, oh my God. Did they get did they, did they get lone Dean Ambrose back for one night? Lights go out. They come back. Taker's in the ring. Rock is scurred. Taker hits a big-ass choke slam. Cody had three of his crossroads yes. and pinned him. And Cody gets this win. And we have not mentioned Samantha Irvin tonight. She is choking back tears. Yes. As she makes the announcement, her voice warbling. Warbling, I say. As she announces, here is your winner and the new Universal Champion, the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. It was emotional. I actually cried at the end. Absolutely great. They made this look like the coronation of the next Hulk Hogan. Everyone loved him, and he loved everyone. And that was a win. And the show ended... And you've never been happier at the end of a WWE show. Consider what WrestleMania is supposed to be. And that is the biggest show of the year with big matches and, you know, happy endings and angles to set up future events and superstars and pomp and circumstance, the whole nine yards. I think this WrestleMania, night two, might have been the greatest night of WrestleMania there's ever been. When are we going to get the Granny Solo Show? 
Ver High already got his spinoff. Anytime she wants it, bro. <laughs> Who would be your fantasy pick to co-host the show for a one-off appearance? I mean, The Rock would be pretty good. I'd have The Rock on the show. I think we'd have a hell of a show. Yeah. Except Granny can't be on. There'd be too much profanity. That is for sure. I didn't understand why they had Cody and Roman having a match on Saturday when they were going to have the big one on Sunday. The Saturday show was a doubles match. It was Cody and Seth versus The Rock and Roman Reigns. And no. the, Yes, it was. It was a doubles match. I never saw Rock once. What did you watch then? I never saw him once, not on the one I watched. Somebody here is living in an alternate reality. I'm not sure if it's her or us. You do a soap opera report. We don't watch the soap operas, but we have listeners who do. And they say that you get like all of this exactly right. But when you watch the wrestling, you somehow get all of it exactly wrong. I don't know. I'm not How kidding. is that? Tucker and uh, I forget her name. So anyway, she's going nut buddy, nutty. She's going to go into the <laughs> fruit factory. Call back. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay. What band performed the hit disc tune Get Down Tonight? KC and the Sunshine Band. Hey. Blank was one of the Veteran British actors who had a role in Star Wars. Sir Alec Guinness. Peter Cushing and the oh, Sunshine Peter Band. <laughs> Peter no! Cushing and the Sunshine Band. Stop! Stop! Someone Photoshop him into the case. Oh, I, I, I think this is coming in the uh, the best of the B&B show. And uh, the match continues. There is a countdown in the screen to the Bucks appearing. That irritated me. Dude, I mean, how many times did you watch this? Exactly once. Well, I watched it like three dozen times like it was a Zapruder film. Sure. I watched everything here. For one viewer, one isolated viewer up in the Pacific Northwest, this whole thing was a massive detriment. I postponed watching Dynamite until I could not postpone it any longer as a professional. I didn't want to see this at all. For sure, CM Punk started the fight. There's no question. Uh, Jungle Boy was not the aggressor. No. Unless Punk thought he was aggressively combing his hair with his fingers. Punk shoves him twice, goes for something like a guillotine. Somewhere in the melee, he may throw like one hockey punch, and then they are very quickly separated. That's it. <laughs> what a fucking nothing burger that is. That changed their entire directional plan for the next half. Since, since then, it's still going on for this, this scuffle. You and I have had worse fights in bars than this. The funny thing is people have matched up Punk's commentary to what actually happened to show that he was, like, exactly right in everything. And, you know, Punk's story is about 80% correct. But uh, the stuff about how this thing ended is not correct at all. When Punk goes, you know, I was trying to, uh, um, what did he say? I was trying to be professional. I just choked him a little bit. That is not what you would get watching this thing. This fucking guy blew his stack, and he shoves this guy twice and tries to pull his head off, and then Joe's violently pulling him apart. Tony Schiavone is like, he is fucking hiding, like, as far as he can away, yeah. and he's, he's just looking like, fuck. Schiavone is still quiet quitting. He is there. He has shown up for work. He has punched his clock. He's where he's supposed to be. He's not participating in any of this garbage. I have no idea why it aired. I never would have aired it. You made Jack look like the biggest babyface scapegoat, even though he's supposed to come back as a heel. You made Tony look like a guy who said his life was in danger because Punk yelled at him. And uh, I don't know. I never would have aired it. Not in a million years. So he's very upset that a certain figure implied that he is afraid of the grind. And the only reason this guy is in the position to attack me is because he was grinding on the boss's daughter. Sweet, lovable Renee. She has the same look on her face that Shivani had. Maybe worse. Like, oh my God. What are we fuck. even doing here? What is happening? 20 straight minutes yeah. of referencing people in WWE. Yep. We got this whole thing with Vince McMahon and Janelle Grant and the culture of WWE. And you're doing a fucking storyline where one woman is hitting on another woman. And the other woman clearly is not into it at all. She keeps rebuffing her. She keeps telling her no. 
It's unwanted advances. Someone please explain to me how this is good. He's tall. He's ripped. He's got real gear. He's got cool hair. He's got poise. He looks like he knows what he's doing there. He looks like he belongs. And he's a hell of an athlete. Yeah, this guy true. is guaranteed, guaranteed to be a huge star. He was awesome. I've been doing this for a long time. I'd like to think I've gotten better. But I need to apologize to everyone. I am going to fail in recapping how horrible this next segment was. I'm not talented enough to capture just how awful all of this was. It's been months and months and months of the Surge Holland bullshit. Every week it gets more and more confusing. I have no idea if I'm supposed to cheer or boo, cheer or boo Ridge Holland. I have no idea if I'm supposed to cheer or boo Joe Gacy. I have no idea why LW was there. LWO was there. I have no idea why Cruz del Toro threw his hand in the door like an idiot to get it broken. Ah! Why is this so dumb? They made a huge comeback. They went back and forth, and Axiom and Nathan Frazier fucking won clean in the middle of the ring. They are the better team. Yep. They are the champions. Yep. And that's it for the Wolf Dogs. This yep. was very, very well done. It is Trick and Carmelo in a cage match. Next week. And then the week after is Trick and Elia for the title. They actually have created a match where I have doubt about what's going to happen. I don't That's know true. the outcome. That is next I presume point. that Trick is winning and staying a little bit longer because I don't think he should be called up yet. But I would not be the least bit surprised if he lost that match and ended up drafted to uh, Raw or SmackDown. Hey, it was a good segment. People love Trick. And uh, we got two big matches coming over the next couple of weeks. So That's true. 